This is Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery with an example of a, what a paint covered edge catcher looks like and we're going to do edge catcher 101 today hopefully and these are edge catchers that have been cut from a 16 by 20 inch panel and I'm probably going to use at least one of those and maybe more this is a little dish party from the party section at Michael's this is my 12 inch by 12 inch canvas I am going to <coughs> start by putting in what I consider to be a sky area and this time I'm going to just cover it with French silk which is prism pour from color art and there is a 20% off coupon code underneath the video and I'm kind of hoping that if I cover the top I've been using a flood coat not really a flood coat but a, a substantial coat of paint that's um, could be Amsterdam could be artist loft could be Meaden, which is what mine was, mixed with Floetrol. And that's what I'm going to do on the bottom half of this. So I can motivate paint to move along. I think I want a little bit more of that. But I'd like a dramatic sky. It might be misplaced in this, but if it's if my intention is just to um, just to show and tell about edge catchers. I just want to make sure this is completely covered and an even coat. I'm thinking about using a shovel, pouring my paints into a little dish or a shovel or both and then pouring them out onto the bottom once I have it. Okay, so that's not covered. Glad I saw that. It's fairly heavy paint. I mix it with Vivid Polypore and Vivid Enamel. I'm not sure which one this one is. They're both good for making blooms, but this is not that. Okay, so I picked out Opalite. Because I want a striped sky. And gray tones and some coppery tones. And I picked out Ambrosia. I'm not sure how I feel about the ambrosia yet. I might it might be perfect. And I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work. that could be considered close enough. I mean, I might want to do something more elaborate at some other point in time, but being that I'm using the French silk as a base, and I see that thing that does not belong, or I saw it, best to get it early in the game. I got it. I have a break on my turntable, so I'm going to turn my canvas around. Let's see if I like that. I want to steal a little bit of, or use a little bit of quinacridone nickel azo gold because I think it'll go well with that. I might even grab some ginger peach. It's a thought. It would be good if I had already gotten it out. Huh. Still no? No? Well, we'll just deal with what I've got for right now. break out of there. I wish I'd found the ginger peach first. But I do like these colors together, even though they're making a sort of a greenish cast in the gray. That's kind of neat, because skies, gray skies are often greenish cast. So, now <laughs> it's time to move on the bottom. And that came about really quickly. I'm going to have to cover my edges later and I'm going to have to put my brake back whether I like it or not. I'm going to clean off my spatula just because. 
no particular reason. And this is cheesecloth you see in the top of this bottle. I had some filaments in this paint, so my solution was to put multiple, la multiple layers of cheesecloth in. So I never have to worry about those filaments. And if you do see filaments, they're so small that they dry flat. I hope that that's enough paint. I wonder if it is. It seems like it might be. I kind of rather have a little bit too much than not enough. And in theory, if I have enough of a base layer and I flow paint, I'm going to make it heavier so that I have absolutely no worries about it drying while I set up my colors for the bottom half. Which will start up high, I think. Although they don't have to. They could start midway and get tipped in both directions, which is something I like to do. Or I liked to do, and it was quite a long time ago I used to do this. Although I did do a couple examples recently. Just as a refresher for myself. Okay, so I said shovel and dish. There's a dish. And I'm going to grab... I'm going to use some of the Misty Veil, which is a prism pour, as a base. Maybe I'm going to use a little bit more of that, because that looks like it's going to be a beautiful color in there. And some of the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. That's a golden product. And Mayan Gold Prism Pour. I don't know how this is going to work. I haven't done this exactly like this before. Here is some stuff I need to use up. This is, I believe, Royal Sapphire. Which is tremendously beautiful. And that combination is unparalleled. That's gorgeous. It'd be nice if I had a little more even. I'm going to throw some Neptune's Gaze in there. I might want to throw a little bit of black in. I have some mead and black. Here's my Fandango, another prism pour, as was... That's the last thing I put in there. <laughs> the Neptune's Gaze is also a prism pour. I have some black iris. That might be my solution. Oh, this is not supposed to be plugged. Come out without blowing up. Well, I have an alternative, I think. Let me just grab the smaller bottle of Fandango. Yeah, that'll work. I feel like I maybe should have used a deeper base. You know, I've got some green tea. The Fandango's a prism pour. The green tea is a primary element. And I'm just beginning to get to use it, and I love it. I'm surprised how much I love it. I'm going to throw a little bit of ambrosia in there. I think that's good. Let's do the black iris. Ambrosia was a prison pour. Black iris is also a prison pour. <coughs> that Nicolazo gold is calling me back again. a bunch of that in there. I did get out a bunch of purples. I'm going to throw a little bit of frozen in there. That's a prism pour. I had some winter green ready to go so I might as well use it. Just a little drop. This is black raspberry. This is an awesome color. It looks like I have too much color already, but that's okay because it's in the dish. 
which is perfect and if I want to scoop it out that's what I'll do. This is another prison pour. This is deep amethyst. And maybe, just maybe, put that in the bucket. I'll just do something I've never done before exactly. In the way of a ribbon pour. Having enough paint is sort of a key to the success of this. I'm going to throw another one of these party lid. Party. I put it on top. <laughs> I make a lid. It works pretty well unless you leave it too many days in a row. So I used more paint than I expected to, but I love what I have. And I usually, let's let it move across. Whoops, there's my heart. <laughs> I didn't realize that was under there. I'm going to fill that in right now. And I'm going to go the wrong direction, which is something I usually say. Before I go the right direction. That's a long way to get down there. I meant to put it in the middle, and I put it a lot too close to the top. It makes me want to use the rest of that paint. Why don't we just do that? I'm going to do it. How am I going to do it? I'm going to do it with a spatula. Maybe. gonna layer it right in there and glop. Glop it in. Which may or may not be a good idea because it, it'd be nice to have even layers to flow up and down but at this point it's all an experiment anyway and I might as well make it a new experiment. So I can just scrape that right off down there. And I basically used all my paint. To me, I can throw that and the spatula in the bucket and get back to trying to um, to tip it. Although I really want to just tip it a whole bunch of ways. Because I think I'll like the patterns better if I move them over first. Any paint that falls off onto my edge catcher is definitely utilizable. That's definitely, the colors are awesome. <laughs> and I like moving it across before I move it down. Hopefully it works out. I could, I could swipe through. I did think I was going to before I started. Swipe through with a, um, gee, I kind of lost the patterns I was looking for. Maybe the idea would, next time would be to just go in one direction. I have a green thumbprint on my sky. Oh well. I know, I can see where that came from, too. <laughs> All right, let's try this one more time. Let's just tip it right up. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe I should move that a little bit closer here. All right, I'm beginning to get some paint, so I'm going to get ready. So a gentle pressure as as evenly distributed across the bottom piece of plastic as you can will help allow the paint to form a seal and since the bottom sheet is almost level it's pretty much horizontal almost it does create a seal so I'm going to rock that bottom against the edge catcher just still holding it in place on one edge and then I'm going to throw it back again I don't have a lot of extra paint on my edge catcher, which I usually like to have. So I'm going to make some by moving that off. 
something that I can use, hopefully, and then start to move everything across again. It's not a fast process. It can be if you have, if things are moving well. I'm just going to fill this in right here. I don't always like to use a white base, and I didn't always use a white base. Sometimes I just use the paint. I really, really wanted more paint, and I thought I used enough. I'm going to fill that in. And now I have to decide if I'm going to use my new palette knife and add some some cells with a potential cell activator usefulness. One, two, three, come on. I've got three minutes left to tell you. I've got three minutes left to work on this. I'm going to use some black. And some gold. And I wasn't sure I was going to do that. And you don't have to. For sure not. Some more down. But that'll help me fill in my gaps too. I'll wipe that off and do it again. A little dab will do me. This is Pebio iridescent gold, precious gold, I believe. Let's move that up. This is mostly in an effort to fill in my missing areas. Not so sure I'm all that thrilled with the white. So note to self, the next time I want to do this, I'll just use less white and more paint. I'm going to try one of these. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try some of the white. It's Amsterdam black and Amsterdam white. And together, they usually do some interesting things. And I got some pretty little cells up there. I'm not used to this palette knife, but that doesn't mean it won't work. I did kind of want to put some trees in, but I'm not sure how that's going to go at this point. I feel more like I'm going to run out of time. Might as well move my brake now so I can remember to turn this around on, on you. I thought I just grabbed a scraper. Yes, I did. There we go. You can tell I'm nervous. I like the cells. Wipe off the knife. Yep, the white didn't show up, but it helped make the cells. And I'm kind of liking my new, my new palette knife. Michael slipped me a 40% off coupon. <laughs> I don't want to get too frisky in the middle without any more cell activator. I should show that to you now. Maybe I should do a little something upside down. Oh, the cells are turning out nicely. I like them. I'm going to do the... Do the black and white combo again, right where I was just at. All right, no trees this time. I've got a minute to tell you guys, please use the 20% off coupon code underneath the video for color art, primary elements, pig, uh, <laughs> prison pores, and the like. You've seen what I can show you, and I haven't even finished. And I do have enough paint, so if I wanted to put the odd tree in... And then I'll just add trunks. Well, that one wasn't good, but that's okay, because we'll figure it out.
Love you guys.